Hi darlings, welcome to a new video. Today I thought I would do something a little bit more relaxed and quite a chilled out chatty video and I wanted to make it a little bit more interactive. So over on my Instagram stories and here on my YouTube community page, I asked you guys for your fashion problems, your questions and your fashion dilemmas and I am going to share my opinions and hopefully some words of wisdom which might help you with your fashion dilemmas. So today's video is just going to be a really chatty one and no further intro required. Let's just get started. I'm going to begin with the Instagram story ones. I have a few screenshot, shot? Screenshotted? <laughs> I don't know. Um, and I'm just going to go through them all one by one and hopefully help you guys with your fashion dilemmas. So the first one is from and I'm just going to apologise right now if I mispronounce any usernames or anything like that. This one looks like it's called El Tu Sabeltsu, and she says she has too many clothes in her closet and yet still wants more. I totally feel your pain. I am exactly the same. I feel like my wardrobe is overflowing. As you guys know, I do a lot of hauls on this channel and I buy a lot more than the typical consumer because of my job. So I totally feel your pain. My top tip would be regular wardrobe cleanses. Now I don't tend to hold everything back for one day. I tend to just, if I see something in my wardrobe that I don't love and I don't, as Marie Kondo would say, feel a spark of joy when I pick it out, then I will put it straight in a pile to take down to the charity shop or take to a local clothes bank, things like that instead of just letting things pile up and up. So regular cleansing of your wardrobe I think is a really good thing to do, little and often, it just makes it a little bit more bite-sized, but also and this definitely depends on where you live, if you've got enough storage, I would suggest actually splitting your wardrobe into two, uh, two seasons, so two sets of two seasons. I keep my spring summer wardrobe downstairs at this time of year and my autumn winter clothes are up in the loft and that makes it so much easier because I literally only have 50% of my clothing in my wardrobe at any one time, so it's a lot more manageable. I would say that after you've done a few clear outs and maybe you've set aside a few afternoons of getting rid of some clothes, things that maybe you haven't worn in a long time, I would recommend watching my clear out videos if you do want some tips on the right mindset to get into and also my video which is 10 things you don't need in your wardrobe. Have a watch of those and really get into the mood of a really good clear out because actually when you have less in your wardrobe it's easier to find outfits, it's easier to put together different things which make you feel really good when you're wearing them and hopefully that will stop you wanting so many clothes and I cannot talk here because I'm a big shopaholic but when you really understand what's in your wardrobe that makes you understand more what your wardrobe needs, any gaps in your wardrobe and hopefully makes you buy less but buy better things for your wardrobe. So I hope that answers your question. Okay the next question, the account on Instagram is called Vendella Gamble and she's asked when to invest and when not to invest. Okay, so I have a pretty strong idea in my head of when to invest in something and that's generally when it's something that I can see myself myself wearing year after year after year. So overall that tends to be items that are more classic, items that are not hugely driven by any particular trend at that time. So I, if you look at everything pretty much in my wardrobe, it's things that I could have worn five years ago and could wear in five years time because these are the things that don't scream any particular trend. Okay, for example, this I actually bought fairly recently, but it's a really simple white dress with broderie anglais on it. Yes, the silhouette is particularly in style at the moment with a very subtle, um, what's it called, fit and flare shape. That is on trend at the moment, but it's not a really big trend. It's not going to go out of style in a few years' time. So I'm not afraid to invest in something that is going to be timeless and stand the test of time. So the first thing when thinking whether to invest or not to invest is, will it stand the test of time? Is it going to look great in my wardrobe in two years' time, in five years' time? And also, is it going to go with the rest of the things in my wardrobe? I tend to buy neutral colored pieces. I tend to go for high quality items that are going to look great with every everything and mix and match really well with the things in my existing collection. I also tend to invest more in accessories because I always find that with a premium handbag or pair of shoes that can really uplift a really simple high street dress. You can go to Topshop, you can go to River Island 
And most of the dresses in my wardrobe are from the high street, but then when you invest in a really beautiful handbag, again, something timeless, not particularly trend-led, it can be a bag of the moment. Like, for example, my Chloe C bag. This is very much kind of an it bag at the moment, but there's nothing about this which screams spring, summer 2019. It's a really beautiful neutral colour. Neutrals for me, black, I don't actually have much black in my wardrobe, white, tan, and this blush pink for me are neutral colours that work with so many things in most people's wardrobe and they suit most skin tones as well so they're very versatile things that you're going to get a lot of wear out of those are the things that you should invest in a handbag something like this that you're going to wear every single day is a worthy investment because you're thinking again about that price per wear so for example if this bag cost me a thousand pounds and I wear a hundred times which I'm gonna wear it more than that I'm sure then it's ten pound per wear is that right Yes, my maths is not the best when it's four o'clock in the afternoon. I've not had enough coffee today. But thinking about the price per wear is also something really important to do when you're weighing up in your head whether to invest or not. As a whole, if something is really on trend at the moment, then I would go to the more affordable side of the high street and not invest because you never know if that thing is going to be on trend in a few years down the line unless that on-trend item perfectly matches your personal style. For example, okay, a pearl headband. I actually haven't invested a lot in pearl headbands. I've gone for the affordable alternatives, but actually they do work really well with my personal style, so I could wear them in a few years' time. But because it's a trend piece, I have gone to the more affordable side of things. So hopefully that makes sense. And again, I feel like these are things that I say in all of my videos, but that would be my tips for when to invest and when not to invest. Right, Gal Pinalisa has said, what should we do if we have a lot of clothes but end up wearing the same ones? Firstly, there's nothing really wrong with that because that means that the pieces that you are wearing on repeat, you know for sure that those are your go-to pieces. You obviously look and feel fantastic when you wear them, so don't beat yourself up about that. Perhaps when you're shopping, you could think, actually, this blouse would go so well with that pair of trousers that I love and I wear all the time. So maybe think about those items that you do reach for time and time again when you're shopping and just buy some new things that will work really nicely with them. You guys know how much I love my Tyne trousers from Reese and when I'm shopping if I look at a blouse and I look at a jumper I instantly think oh my gosh that would look fantastic with my trousers that I wear on repeat and it just gives me another excuse to get more wear out of them. A slightly different tip would be, and this is if you do want to get more out of your wardrobe, it would be to rotate your hangers. So in your wardrobe, if everything is facing one direction, once you've worn something, washed it, and then you're about to put it back in your wardrobe, why not turn the hanger around like that, and then challenge yourself not to wear that item until most of the other items in your wardrobe are also turned around. If after a couple of months you realise that there are maybe 10 or 15 items that the hanger is still the original way round, do you really need those items in your wardrobe anymore? You're clearly not wearing them. Do you not love them? Do they not work with your personal style? Do they not work with other things in your wardrobe? If so, maybe it's time to either sell them or take them to a charity shop or see if a friend would like them instead. Fabulosa Cacueo, I'm so sorry if I'm <laughs> butchering these names, has said, my bag is too big and heavy and ruins every cute outfit. Girl, I feel your pain because I am the queen of huge handbags. So many of my favorite handbags are ginormous. My Valentino bag, my Loewe basket bag, my Mulberry Bays water, they are huge and I love to carry the entire world around with me. I even went to Wimbledon today and I took my laptop with me as well as a big camera and all of my memory cards and charging devices, I love to carry it all so I definitely feel your pain. My first tip is to actually treat yourself to a really nice big handbag because then you won't feel like you're laden down with a really big ugly bag. You know, if you treat yourself to something that you feel proud to wear and that actually elevates your wardrobe, then you won't feel so begrudging to take that bag around with you. Obviously you want this bag to be really comfortable to wear, so avoid chain straps. I made the mistake of investing in a Mulberry Cecily bag a few years ago and it's huge, really big, and it's also got chain straps. So when I wear it, it literally like shreds into my arm. Whereas two of my current favorite large bags, I feel like I'm doing weights showing you this one, the Loewe basket bag. This has still got my laptop in it from 
earlier, this bag honestly weighs a ton, but the shoulder straps are a good length and they're big chunky leather straps, so actually it's not hurting my shoulder and it's not hurting my outfit either because it is a very chic big bag. Similarly with this giant Valentino bag, I tend to use this when travelling, it is the perfect kind of beach bag or hand luggage bag the same as the Loewe, it fits perfectly over the shoulder and the leather straps are just super comfortable and they're not ruining the outfit in any way. If you are especially concerned about it ruining your outfit, then why not invest in a smaller bag that you can put inside the bigger bag? So this is, for example, if you are taking a big bag to work and you want to nip out to a meeting or you want to nip out for lunch, you can just grab your little bag that was inside your big bag and take that out with you instead. If I'm going out taking outfit photos or something like that, then I'll often have just a cute little crossbody bag or a little wallet on a chain bag with me as well as the big bag and I'm not afraid to just I mean, the big bags are big enough to put the smaller bags in them, so I'm not afraid to have two bags with me and then just take the little bag out when I want my outfit to look more chic. Sunihi Parker has asked, I don't want to buy fast fashion. Any suggestions for affordable but sustainable clothing? Okay, so my top tip would be to buy less. You don't need to be buying new things every single season. You don't need to be buying the latest trends. If you want to spend, say you've got a budget in your head, don't think about the amount, the quantity of items that you can get for that budget. Think about the pieces that you are going to get so much wear out of. The most sustainable thing that you can do is wear what's already in your wardrobe. And I might be shooting myself in the foot here by saying this because a lot of my videos are sharing new clothes with you. And I know, guys, it is a dilemma that I think about all the time. But I hope that the clothes and the style tips that I share with you are encouraging you to buy the right things that you're going to get a lot more wear out of as a opposed to buying more and more and more things. I hope that that's what I'm helping you to do anyway. So the most sustainable thing you can do is shop what's in your existing wardrobe. I have got a video on ways to, um, can't remember what it's called, but it's something like ways to style items that you've already got in your wardrobe. I will leave it linked on the screen here and down below. And there's just simple ways that you can update things you already own. So if you have been wise and you've invested in classic timeless things, then a really small tweak, like for example, with your white summer dress from a couple of years ago, you can make that really perfect for summer 2019 by adding a shell necklace with your old handbag, add a silk scarf and just elevate things you already have in your wardrobe. If you take care of the things you've got in your wardrobe by washing them well and just generally taking a bit more care from your clothing, then hopefully these things are going to last you and they're going to look good for a really long time. M underscore Abel Coca has said, is it okay to wear a floral dress in winter? Absolutely. I think that there are no time limits when it comes to wearing a floral dress. One of my favourite winter outfits this year, I'll hopefully try and find a picture that I shot in Istanbul. We went there when it was really chilly earlier this year. I wore a red and gold uh, long, I think it was long sleeve, floral dress with a faux fur gilet and over knee boots. Those are my two accessories that I would say are the perfect solution to wearing a floral dress in winter because you want to layer up and you want to add as much warmth to the body as possible. So a faux fur gilet, thermal underneath if you can get away with it and over knee boots are the perfect way of styling a floral dress in winter. I think you have to be a little bit careful with the colours. I probably wouldn't wear, um, I don't know, like a coral, coral coloured floral dress in winter just because it's not quite the right vibe, but if you've got, uh, even white I think is absolutely fine. Maybe you want to put a lovely chunky jumper over the top and then you'll be able to see the bottom of the dress underneath. But then if you look for colours in your wardrobe that are a little bit uh, more neutral, for example whites, blacks, tans and blush colours, I think that with the right accessories you absolutely can wear them any time of year. But if you've got floral dresses that have got navies, burgundies, dark rich colours which you typically associate with autumn winter, then absolutely, it's all about the accessories, it's all about the layering. It feels weird talking about this when it's 30 degrees today, um, but with the right layering pieces, then absolutely, you can definitely wear your floral dresses in winter. Olga Lillian, Liliana Ramirez Mendoza has asked, home office outfits, when tired of leggings, you want to relax but be stylish at home, did you buy the Reese Tyne trousers? Because honestly, they are my go-to for being relaxed and at home. But in all seriousness, I think that you can definitely get loungewear now, which is really smart. Look for fabric that is um, stretchy, that's got a good stretch to it. So even if you're curled up on the sofa on your laptop, you're still going to be comfortable. But if it's that really nice kind of thick, close to the body fabric, then it's not going to look as relaxed as a pair of, I don't know, jogging bottoms, for example. 
I also think that if you look for some nice materials when it comes to a merino wool jumper, once again it's really cosy but it's still smart as well. Yeah, I would say just look for things that have got stretch to them, some fabrics which are breathable, soft to the skin, because then you're going to feel like you're wearing your dressing gown, but if the postman rings or you have to nip out for a last minute errand or meeting, then you're still going to look really smart. I will leave a link to a few of my favourite, more relaxed items down below that will hopefully give you a little bit of inspiration. This is a really interesting question. It's from Angela Brum 10 and she said, how to tone down our chic style when we go to more casual meetups? Oh, oh my goodness. I wish I had the perfect answer for that. But um, it's quite funny because I feel like here in London and the lifestyle that I have, I go to nice events, I go to meetings with people that I like to get dressed up for, and I take it kind of for granted that I have a lot of opportunities, this is not me showing off by the way, I'm just saying it how it is, I have a lot of opportunities to wear the lovely things in my wardrobe, and then sometimes I go back home to Gloucester, and that's just a totally different environment, it's literally like I'd be having meetings with farmers if I was having meetings with anyone, it's so dressed down there, and I think there are ways of being chic, but a lot of the things in my wardrobe just don't work for that lifestyle. I think that you just kind of have to find ways of showing your personal style but without wearing items that are inappropriate. So for example, if I was going around my hometown, I, prob I probably would wear this kind of dress actually, but maybe I would pair it with more casual accessories. I'd probably still wear a straw bag, but maybe I'd wear um, flat sandals. I probably wouldn't wear the Valentino sandals that I've been wearing today. I'd find ways of styling up more casual um, outfits like jeans and a really nice blouse. I would say mixing and and matching your smarter items and your more chic items with more plain items. But then again, it totally depends on where you live, the kind of events you're going to. If you want to dress chic, then no one is stopping you. It is always better, in my opinion, to be overdressed than underdressed, and as long as you wear the items that you want to wear with confidence, then you're going to look and feel amazing. So don't let your surroundings and your non-chic things that you've got to do put you off from wearing what you want to wear. Also, I think that accessories are a really great way of still being super chic. You can really amp up a very simple outfit. For example, jeans and a t-shirt with a pair of hanging pearl earrings or even a headband and some dramatic sunglasses and a great pair of shoes and a low-key but very fabulous handbag is a really fantastic and super chic outfit that is appropriate no matter, I think, where you live or what kind of events you've got to go to. <laughs> SWAT89 has said, finding comfortable heels that don't look like something my mother would wear. Well, SWAT89, I think that you are in luck this season because the low block heel is so comfortable and there are so many chic styles at the moment. You may remember I've spoken a lot about my Chloe C sandals, those mules. Mules in general, I think, are so chic. Look for pointed toe mules. They're really elongating things like my Valentino sandals and I know I've just mentioned two designer options but there are high street options as well. For example, I have got this pair of sandals from River Island which are pretty much identical to the Valentino sandals. They've got a low chunky block heel so they're going to be nice and comfortable. They've got so many lovely design details. This strap is very flattering, it really keeps your foot in place so you're not going to be tottering around all over the place and they're so chic. Your mum might want to wear this style of shoe as well, I know my mum probably would, but that doesn't make it any less cool. I think as long as you go for a design that's really flattering, opt again for neutral tones like this is a gold and for me gold and metallic is a neutral and white then it's going to be super versatile as well. And then because of their popularity, so many high street stores right now have got mules. This is my favourite pair of Topshop mules. You've got a really lovely soft pointed toe. Again, a chunky block heel, so really comfortable and easy to walk in. And these definitely don't look like anything that your mum would wear. Again, my mum probably would do. But these, I think, are still a very, very chic style on the high street. And there are so many options out there at the moment. So mules and chunky block heels, I would say, are the way forward if you want comfortable heels that are still stylish for summer 2019. Emma K. Cleary has said, not knowing how to dress for an occasion, like would I prefer to be over or underdressed? Emma, it is always, in my opinion, better to be overdressed than underdressed. If you're overdressed and you wear your outfit with confidence, then no one's even going to think you're overdressed. They're going to think you look fabulous and they are going to wish that they got more dressed up as well. Whereas if you feel underdressed, then it just kind of brings the whole 
it kind of can bring your mood down a little bit. You're like, oh my god, this is embarrassing. I should have worn a dress or I should have worn X, Y, Z. And you just never want to feel not good enough. Whereas if you are overdressed, then you certainly are never going to feel not good enough. If you're unsure about a dress code, then I would recommend going for a dress style that you feel really comfortable in. So for example, for me, it would be a brodery dress, obviously not a white brodery dress when going to a wedding, but just something that you know you feel really comfortable in. It probably shouldn't be something with really dramatic design details, like don't go with something with huge voluminous sleeves, but something really chic and something that's very stylish. You can style it up with some fabulous accessories, something that's not too OTT, but still a very beautiful and elegant outfit you really can't go wrong with something like that and I hope that in my hauls and in my styling videos I show you quite a few different options. I know you guys have seen me talking about this quite a lot recently but this dress from Ted Baker I would say is perfect when you aren't 100% sure of the dress code because I think that it can be made to look more dressed up or dressed down and it's not too in your face but it is a beautiful elegant dress. Recently Charlie and I went to a film premiere and I didn't know the dress code because it was going to be a yellow carpet, not a red carpet, it was for the premiere of the film yesterday, um, and I wasn't going as like a special guest or anything, I was literally just invited to the premiere, but we did have to walk the red carpet, so I didn't really know what to wear, so I thought if I wear this and I wear a pearl headband, that's something that's really true to my style, something that I feel really confident in, so I can walk down the red slash yellow carpet with confidence. Um, and I just felt that it was perfect for the occasion and it would have been perfect had the event been more smart but also it would have been perfect if we'd have had a more casual after party or something like that. So items that you feel really comfortable in are more important than whether you are over or underdressed in my opinion. Emma MacDonald has said her fashion dilemma is trying to look stylish when you have a set work blouse, black pants and a jacket for your uniform. <sighs> this is really tricky but once again my answer really is how you wear it and your accessories. I don't know how strict your policy is but I think that the way to look really chic if you have a really strict uniform is to focus on the areas that you do have control over. So is your hair perfectly groomed? Is your makeup done in a beautiful way? Are you looking after your skin? Are your nails perfectly manicured? These are simple ways of ensuring that you look well groomed because that's what you've got control control over. If you don't have control over the actual items that you're wearing then there's nothing I can say, there's nothing, you can't break the rules. I had this stroll a lot in school, I actually got told off so many times I was made part of the uniform committee in the hope that I would actually stick to wearing my school uniform but no, I would pin things to it, I would sew lace to it, I did so many things to try and embellish my uniform and I wouldn't recommend doing that, it's not really a good look to DIY your uniform. But ensure that the items that you are wearing fit you properly if you're wearing the same thing and I don't know if you've been given a specific blouse and a blazer but if not, just ensure that these items are items that you're going to be wearing on a daily basis, the ultimate price per wear. Your uniform is something that you wear day in, day out, so the price per wear on this is going to be absolutely minimal. So invest in something that you feel great in, beautiful materials that cut your body, cut to your body in a perfect way so that you feel fabulous and know that you look smart when you're wearing them. Frankie Flanaganks has asked how to style midi skirts without feeling grannyish. Midi skirts I absolutely love midi skirts, but even sometimes I look in the mirror and I'm like, damn, what do I need to change about this outfit so that I look like a 20-something year old as opposed to a 90-something year old? I would say that heels are a really big part of wearing midi skirts, and in the winter I like to ensure, if I'm wearing boots, that they are pretty high, as high as I can manage, because I just want to elevate and add to that kind of bottom half of the body to make my waist to floor ratio as long as possible. In the summer I tend to focus more on the silhouette, so again I'm wearing heels, I find that more flattering, but I don't want to have too much bulk on the top if I've got bulk on the bottom, so when it comes to looking at your silhouette, if you are wearing a midi skirt that's a little bit more voluminous, perhaps it's A-line or pleated, then you want to keep the bodice section a little bit more form-fitting, that generally is going to be a lot more flattering. Other things to think of are just the fabrics, are the colours a little bit old-fashioned, do the colours suit you perfectly? Generally I find that neutrals with the right accessories again, can be made to look totally timeless, and if you think timeless looks grannyish, then I don't know what to say. Personally, I love it. Esti Elisi has asked, how can you tell if a piece of clothing will stand the test of time? And she said she wants practical advice. Okay, so first of all, I feel like I talk about this a lot in my videos, but when you're looking at a piece of clothing in a shop, okay, let's, let's do a little example. Okay, so a really 
simple example. Say I'm looking at this pair of shorts in a shop and I want to know will they stand the test of time. The first thing I ask myself is are they going to suit me and are they going to work with my personal style because if I don't feel great when I'm wearing something, if I don't feel like they suit me, then I'm not going to be pulling that item out of my wardrobe and chances are when next summer comes around I'm going to look at these and think nah, I didn't look and feel great in these so I'm going to toss them out. So do they work for you? Do they work for your body type? When I look at these I think oh great they're high waisted, tick, I know I love high waisted things because they make my legs look longer. They have a nice fit and flare which is a design detail that I know I love thinking about the other things in my wardrobe I know that I really like that silhouette so that's another tick the next thing to look at is the timelessness of the design forgive me as I sound like a stuck record because I talk about this all the time but opting for things which don't have crazy design details things which have very subtle design details are always going to be so much more timeless and therefore stand the test of time than things with big logos big prints Things which are totally plain tend to be far more timeless than those with patterns on them, and that's just a general rule. Colours as well, neutrals are never going to go out of style, white is never going to go out of fashion. Tans, blacks, blush pink shades, they are neutral tones and they are not going to go out of fashion and so will stand the test of time. And then of course the quality, and I feel like I should link my um, how to shop for quality video up on the screen here and down below. You want to look at things like are the fabrics of, re of a good quality, are they a natural fabric that's going to be breathable, will you be able to wash it a few times or many times without it bobbling, with it still looking good, so high quality material quality material is definitely something to look out for. So these are linen shorts, they're cut in a beautiful way and I can just feel the quality of these is really high. They've got really neat stitching, the seams are all perfectly finished, so the design details on this are all giving me big green ticks that these are going to stand the test of time. So to summarise when shopping, does it work with your personal style? Are the materials of good quality? Is it a neutral colour? Is it a timeless design? If so, these pieces should stand the test of time in your wardrobe and as long as you look after them, then hopefully they'll be in your collection for you to wear for years to come. Ons Anki says that her fashion dilemma is small boobs in a world where dresses, bikinis, tops are made for a tiny waist and a large chest. I have to say, I don't feel that that's the case. I have very small boobs as well, practically non-existent, and I actually don't feel that items are made for a large chest. In fact, sometimes if I wear a bra with padding, I think my clothing doesn't suit me and doesn't fit the way that it should, whereas sometimes when I don't wear a padded bra, I feel that it suits me in a better way. So. I don't know where you're shopping, but I would say as long as you're buying things that are in your correct size, things that are too small are obviously going to fit you uh, strangely in different places, but if you're shopping from retailers that have got um, a good size ratio, then hopefully these things are going to be fitting you well. When it comes to design details, I think when you are small chested you can be a lot more flexible, you can wear halter necks, you can wear off the shoulder tops, and then when it comes to bikinis, I feel your pain when it comes to those kind of triangle bikinis, I just know that they don't work for me and so I go for bandeau bikinis because that's things that small boobed girls can wear whereas larger boobed girls might not be able to wear a bandeau bikini because it doesn't provide enough support. I would say just try on a few different pieces and don't try to create a body shape that you don't have. By trying on a few different designs you'll soon come to realise what kind of silhouettes work for you. As I've mentioned earlier in this video I know that fit and flare works for me, I know that A-line pieces work for me, off the shoulder, v-necks, they're all things that as small boobed girls we can get away with wearing so hopefully there are many options to suit your body type. Michelle Chloe Brown's fashion dilemma is every time I look at my wardrobe I feel like I'm drowning. Okay, Michelle, I would say it's time for a wardrobe detox. As I mentioned at the very beginning of this video, I really like to cleanse my wardrobe regularly so it's not such a big job. I'm not gonna go through all of those tips again but just having a really good cleanse of your wardrobe I think is the best thing you can do and why not spend an afternoon just having a play around with your outfits sometimes what I like to do and especially before going on holiday is just spend two or three hours picking out something that I love so for example a skirt that I absolutely love and then styling it up with four or five different tops and taking a photo of those outfits in the mirror because then when I open my wardrobe and I do see a lot of clothes I recognize that skirt and I'm like ah wait a minute I styled that the other day and I look through my camera 
memorable and then there's loads of outfit ideas right there. If there are things that after your afternoon of styling you've not found any ways of wearing or you just haven't touched them in a long time, then it's time to say goodbye to those pieces and hopefully create a little bit more space in your wardrobe. <laughs> Wishing upon the stars, her fashion dilemma is wearing white but spill some food on you, what do you do? This happens to me quite a lot. I have over the years become a lot more trained when it comes to not dropping food on me. That's the number one tip is to just be a little bit more careful. Don't be afraid of being the dork that tucks in a napkin or a serviette when you're eating. I do that all the time. I make sure to have a napkin on my lap um, and like don't drink coffee when you're in a moving car, things like that. So tip number one, try really hard not to spill things on you. The second tip is to treat the stain or the spillage as soon as possible. So just excuse yourself to the ladies room and go and rinse it under cold water. That is usually the best thing you can do. If there's some hand soap there, depending on the material, just take a tiny bit of hand soap. What I normally do is create a lather in my hands and then just rub it on the area that I've spilled food and then really saturate it with more water. Then just wring it out if you can do. Sometimes rubbing fabric on fabric is a really good way of getting rid of stains and then just position yourself under the hand dryer or something for a few moments. It's better to go out um, and join the rest of your party at a dinner with a bit of a wet patch than to spend the rest of the evening with tomato ketchup on your blouse. So treating the stain as soon as possible and then as soon as you get home, whack it in the washing machine with some vanish. That is the best way to get rid of any stains in your white outfits. I'm just gonna do a few more because I'm conscious I've been filming for quite a while. Sara Alhanbali has asked, wearing white trousers slash jeans without my underwear showing. Okay, first of all, when you're shopping for white trousers and jeans, just make sure that they are thick enough and of good enough quality that they're not going to be sheer because even if you wear nude underwear, if the fabric of the jeans and trousers is really thin, then it's not really gonna be flattering. I find that I can look a little bit like a Michelin man if you can see too much through the jeans. So shop for jeans which aren't so sheer in the first place. I know that's so much easier said than done and you've probably already got some favorites in your collection, which is why you're asking this question. Nude underwear doesn't necessarily mean the typical nude underwear that you get in shops. It's the underwear colour that's closest to your skin. So for me, sometimes it's actually more of a pinky shade as opposed to nude, typical nude underwear. It might be white underwear, it might be black underwear, but ones that are closest to your skin colour are always going to be the most nude when you are wearing white. Bianca Vardson has asked for office wear suggestions in summer when it's hot outside and cool in the office. Again, I would say dresses are your best friend and then perhaps you want to have a little pashmina, a little cardigan, something which you can scrunch up and put in your bag because when you're out and about you don't want to be carrying a big jacket so something that can easily be folded up or scrunched up and popped in your bag is a really good solution. A dress, something that perhaps is long sleeved, so for example something like this. A shirt dress is a really good option because actually a lot of your body is covered thanks to the long sleeves and the midi length of the dress but then the material is really breathable. It's got these broidery sections which just encourage airflow. If you watched my how to look chic when it's hot video you'll know that these kind of design details really help to keep you cool on the outside. Still smart enough to wear in the office but it's still covering up a lot of your skin so this kind of thing should really regulate the body temperature and keep you a little bit warmer. Keep the chill off if you are directly underneath the air aircon but still be airy enough that you do keep cool when it's hot outside or when you're on a very hot and muggy tube. And the final question that I'm going to have time to answer today but I will definitely do this again because it's been so fun and I've had so many amazing questions. It's from Claire Brunning and she said I never know how to inject more colour into my wardrobe. Colour is something that I have a love-hate relationship with. I love colourful things and I think they look so fabulous and striking but neutrals are just so much easier to wear. I would definitely recommend having the base of your wardrobe and most if not all of your basics in a neutral shade and then just cherry picking some colorful pieces as and when you see them and really fall in love with them. I wouldn't plan, this is just my opinion, I wouldn't plan to have a colorful wardrobe. I would plan to have a really versatile neutral wardrobe and then some striking statement colour pieces that make you feel fabulous when you wear them. If you have a wardrobe full of neutral coloured bases, 
basics and you're going to find those colourful pieces much easier to style and work in with your wardrobe and therefore find more ways of wearing them. On the other hand, if you see a really colourful dress, then you don't need to worry about what to wear it with. For example, I've got this incredible coral coloured dress and I don't need to worry about whether it goes with other things in my wardrobe because this is the entire outfit. I've got so many neutral handbags, like a straw bag or a neutral metallic pair of shoes that I know will go with this. They just tend to go with everything so don't need to worry about mixing and matching anything in my wardrobe to go with this. So bright coloured dresses are far easier to style than bright coloured separates. If you've fallen in love with a particular colour for that season, for example this season it's mustard yellow, again you could go for a dress in that shade and in my recent Topshop haul I showed you a couple of beautiful mustard yellow dresses but also you could go for a mustard yellow or a I don't know, hot pink handbag, or a pair of shoes, or even a lipstick, or a scarf to put around your neck. You can take it as simple as possible. In fact, sometimes I think that's the best thing to do. Wear a beautiful classic neutral outfit, and then a really striking accessory to just, you know, have a bit more fun with your outfit, and play with that colour, but without having to invest in something that might be a little bit more challenging to pair with the other items in your wardrobe. So darlings, I feel like I've talked for long enough. I really hope you found this interesting and useful. I have loved sharing these tips with you, and I hope I've helped you with some of your fashion dilemmas. If you enjoyed this video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new and stick around for so many more fashion videos coming your way very soon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one.